Hi everyone and thanks for tuning in. Welcome to the advanced guide to trains. This guide is structured in four parts. If you want to skip to a specific one, there are timestamps in the description for that. We are going to speak about how to unlock them and how to automate them, different ways to build a railway system, efficiency and advanced tips and tricks. You can get trains at tier 6 in the hub with the monorail train technology. Unlocking them will cost 150 heavy modular frames, 100 computers and 200 motors. To automate a train you need to have at least one train station connected to power with an, a railway attached to it. A train will only drive two stations if the locomotive is facing the same direction as the train station. When building a train station there is a small arrow above the track showing you the direction. Or you can look at the sign of the station. It needs to be at the side the train is leaving it. To automate it you need a timetable for the train. You can create that by entering the train and pressing C or by going to any train station. There you have the option to create a timetable for any train. Enter every station the train is supposed to stop at in the order you want to. You can add a stop by pressing the plus on the bottom and then click on a name to change the station. Close the timetable and leave the locomotive. The train should start moving. When entering the station, the wagon which are aligned with the cargo terminal will load or unload the contents. They will only do that when the train came to a full stop, not while driving through so. And only when the train went to the station by itself. There are different ways to build a train system. One track, two directions. We have a track with a train station at each end. All stations face to the end of the track. The train has two locomotives at each end, facing in different directions. The train will always go forward. So, One track with loops. You have a track with a loop at the end for the train to turn around. The train has always the option to turn around to reach the station in the right direction, no matter which one it has been built. A train only needs to have one locomotive that way, because a train can use up to 110 megawatts of power, that's nothing to scoff at. A circular system. You have a giant loop on which the train can run around in circles all day long. The station has to be aligned with the train, or you need to create some loops for the train to turn around. Mixed together with loop tracks, this is a good way to build a flexible railway system. With enough turning loops, you can guarantee that trains can get fast to the station they are needed at. And lastly, a two-way system. You can build a system in which trains only go in one direction, depending on which side they are on. Trains have no collisions at the moment so they can pass right through each other. But if you like your trains to not do that, that's the way to build. Other than cosmetical reasons, it has no advantage though, but it's twice as expensive to build. If you like this kind to build, I'm going to show you two ways you can make a crossing. A nice four-way junction and a roundabout. I'm going to show you how to build them on a minimal footprint but you can make them a little bit bigger to have it easier to build, of course. I'm going to be pretty precise here. Even one tick to the side or front and the whole build will not work and you will probably not be able to lay your tracks like I did. So. Try to watch carefully and see how many clicks I did where, so you can do the same.
one of the biggest problems with this intersection was that you can build three-way switches, but they don't really work. You can't switch them manually, and even the trains have problems. I think they aren't even supposed to be buildable. So thanks to Lilith Kitsune to showing me this way. The roundabout has the additional advantage that you can use it as a loop for your railway systems so that trains can turn around and even go right back the way where they came from. Trains are a good way to transport wares over long distances. A conveyor belt Mark 1 costs you one iron plate per 2 meter length, so one iron ore per meter. Higher belts will cost even more as seen here on the list. A track costs you 9 steel beams and 9 steel pipes per 100 meters, or 0.54 iron ore and 0.54 coal per meter. Well. Plus 30,588 in different basic resources to build two stations and two cargo terminals. A terminal can transport two belts full of materials with trains. This means with a Mark III belt you need a track length of 1,580 meters to make trains cheaper than belts. 273 meters with Mark IV belts and 772 meters with Mark V belts. And yeah, Mark IV belts are by far the most expensive and basic resources. But are trains faster than belts? True answer is yes. A Mark V belt has a speed of a little less than 45 km per hour. But a train has a speed of about 110 km per hour. But the fastest way to transport goods are still containers. Nevertheless, that doesn't help your factory at all. The important thing about transporting wares are the throughput. I mean, sure, it might need 5 minutes on a long Mark 1 belt for your coal to reach you. Even if you have 4 MK1 belts, the coal will still need 5 minutes. The speed doesn't change. With a Mark 2 belt, it will need 2 and a half minutes. Even through, you are transporting half the items per minute than the four Mark I belts. So you see, the throughput, or items per minute, is what it's all about. Now, what throughput has a train then? 
Well, the answer depends on the time the train needs for one round trip. Easy answer? Four minutes oh six for uh, 720 items per minute throughput. 740 for 480 items. And 11 minutes 51 for 270. Complex answer? A train with one freight car transport 32 slots of materials per trip. Most goods used in high quantity will stack to 100 pieces per slot. Therefore, a car transports 3,200 items. And Mark 5 bells had a throughput of 780 items per minute. So we'll need 4 minutes and 6 seconds to put 3,200 items through. And that's the time the train has to fullify one belt. Half that with two belts. However, you can always double or triple the time by having two or three or even more trains going the same way. A single train makes about 1,833 meters per minute. So you see, depending on your wanted throughput, a single train can cover somewhat between 3 and 18 kilometers distance. With a map less than 6 kilometers across, this is quite a lot actually. You can transport multiple wares with multiple freight cars with one train. Because you normally do not want any items mixing in the cargo terminals, you have two ways to ensure that. First, using empty platforms. This is a good solution when you have more wares on a train than a specific station needs. Therefore, if you have a train transporting iron ingots, iron ore and copper ore, and you want only the iron and copper ore to be unloaded at a station, you can build a station, then an empty terminal and two freight terminals. The iron ingots are on an empty terminal that way they won't be unloaded. Secondly, using locomotives. If you have a multi-cargo station and only want to load specific goods, you can have blocked some with locomotives. So if you have a mining station with a limestone, copper ore and iron ore terminal, you can have a train with two locomotives and two freight cars to only collect the ores. Or have a train with one locomotive, one freight car and one locomotive and again one freight car to only collect the limestone and iron ore. As an additional tip, you can raise tracks by building foundations for the start and end point of the tracks. You do not need foundations in between. If you don't like the look of that, delete the foundations afterwards and use conveyor poles to give it a nice realistic monorail look. When doing the foundations, you can have a short straight track with two foundations to ensure the track is going a certain direction or have split off nicely and even without going through the other track. To deliver power to your locomotives, your cargo terminals and your train station, you need to connect the station with your power grid. The railways then will deliver the power via the tracks to every other station you have on the same railway. You can then get the power for other facilities from those other stations. As a last note, the two outputs and inputs above each other can make a clean build difficult with the cargo terminals. I find the best way is to do it with an elevator to the side, like this. Well, that's it for today. If you want to see more guides, leave me a like and subscribe if you like my videos. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun building. See ya.